life insurance we all know life insurance is the insurance of human life and is a long term business while general insurance is an annual business with some exceptions general insurance covers all other categories of insurance other than life in this lesson we will study life insurance salient features of life insurance life insurance contracts types of policies and underwriting after going through this presentation you should be able to discuss life insurance and salient features of life insurance explain the life insurance contracts and types of policies describe the underwriting and underwriting action and discuss the solvency valuations and premium costing a contract of life assurance is that in which one party agrees to pay a given sum on the happening of a particular event contingent upon the duration of human life in consideration of the immediate payment of a smaller sum or certain equivalent periodical payments by another life insurance business is the business of effecting contract upon human life an untimely and premature death of the bread earner brings economic disaster to the dependent family the government can have some social security schemes for the socially and economically backward sections of the society that is for people below the poverty line group efforts can be made available through group life or accident or health insurance schemes a person makes his own personal financial plan and decides where he would like to invest his savings Several instruments are offered by the public sector and private sector. There is nothing more uncertain than life and nothing more certain than life insurance. Hence among all the above security measures, life insurance is the best guard for an individual and his family. The importance of insurance must be made known to all. If this is done, the distress of an individual and his family, though inevitable, will get minimized. the growth and evolution of life insurance into the present day scientific mechanism can be attributed to the rapid growth of actuarial sciences it is a support for the successful running of a family life insurance started in india as early as the year 1818 the first insurance company in india the oriental life insurance company started in calcutta by europeans to help widows of their own community the insurance act 1938 was first comprehensive legislation governing both the life and non life sectors of insurance the life insurance corporation was established on 1st september 1956 under the general direction and control of ministry of finance life insurance is a contract for payment of a sum of money to the person assured or his or her nominee on the happening of the event insured against life insurance is an institution that eliminates risk it substitutes certainty for uncertainty and comes to the aid of the bereaved family in the event of the unfortunate death of the assured salient features of life insurance are instrument of savings provides social security risk coverage starts from the date of accepting of proposal beneficiary nominee or legal heir stands to gain policy can be assigned or mortgaged policy holders can seek loans against policy certain policies cover up for treatment to serious ailments ministry of finance extends income tax benefits on the amount of premiums paid money can be set aside for children's marriage and education and provision for old age Essentials of a life insurance contract are as follows sum assured the amount payable when the specified event occurs term the period during which the event must occur for the sum assured to become payable premium the amount payable by the insured as consideration to the insurer mode of payment of premium it could be monthly quarterly half yearly or annually it may be direct payment by the individual or a deduction from the salary by the employer premium paying period 
being the duration for which the premium is payable. This may be the same or less than the term. Participation in profits. Whether the policy will participate or not participate in the surplus generated by the insurer. Participating policies are called with profit policies and non-participating policies are called without profit policies. A good financial planning will protect an individual from unforeseen financial crisis. It will provide required financial support and confidence. Financial planning can be done for long term or short term depending upon the need to cover the entire life or part thereof of an individual. Any person who has attained majority and is not found ineligible to enter into a valid contract can take out a life insurance policy for himself and on those in whom he has insurable interest. Life insurers offer various forms of term plans and traditional life policies as well as interest sensitive products which have become more prevalent since the mid 1980. Term insurance provides protection for a specified period of time. This period could be as short as one year or provide coverage for a specific number of years such as 5, 10 and 20 years or to a specified age as high as 80. Policies are sold with various premium guarantees. The longer the guarantee, the higher the initial premium. Types of term insurance are renewable term plans, give you the right to renew for another period when a term ends, regardless of the state of your health. Convertible term policies often permit you to exchange the policy for a permanent plan level or decreasing term. Under a level term policy, the face amount of the policy remains the same for the entire period. Adjustable premium. Traditionally, insurers have not had the right to change premiums after the policy is sold. Permanent insurance term insurance is designed to provide protection for a specified time period. Permanent insurance is designed to provide coverage for your entire lifetime. There are two basic categories of permanent insurance, traditional and interest sensitive, each with a number of variations. Traditional whole life policies are based upon long term estimates of expense, interest and mortality. The premium, death benefits and cash values are stated in the policy. While insurers guarantee stated benefits on traditional contracts, Far into the future, based on long-term and overall company experience, they allocate investment earnings differently on interest-sensitive whole life in order to better reflect current fluctuations in interest rates. Traditional variable life provides a minimum guaranteed death benefit, but many universal variable life products do not, and should investment experience be bad, coverage will terminate if substantially higher premium payments are not made. Credit life insurance need not be purchased from the organization granting the loan. Debit insurance is insurance with premiums payable monthly which are meant to be collected by the agent at your home. Joint life insurance provides coverage for two or more persons with the death benefit payable at the first death. Endowment insurance provides for the payment of the face amount to your beneficiary if death occurs within a specific period of time. Senior life insurance, sometimes referred to as graded death benefit plans and provides eligible older applicants with minimal whole life coverage without a medical examination. Life insurance underwriting is about risk assessment just as life insurance is about risk management. The premise for underwriting does not arise from the mere existence of risk, but from the reality that all risks are not equivalent. Underwriting in a general sense is concerned with the insurer's risk selection. Insurers employ life underwriters to review life insurance applications. Life insurance underwriting is based on the hazards presented by an applicant. Physical hazards, moral hazards and occupational hazards are just some of the risk areas examined. Medical underwriting type of underwriting can take place with or without medical examinations. 
Sometimes the underwriter requires a combination of warranties and representations from the applicant and medical tests. This depends of the applicant's age and coverage sought typically. Information such as family history and personal medical history will be sought in this phase. In occupation or lifestyle underwriting, the underwriter also requires basic information about activities undertaken for employment or enjoyment. Risky jobs include the armed services, pilots and construction. Activities that are considered hazardous include racing and skydiving for instance. Financial underwriting involves the policy owner and insured if the two are different people. It is used to detect moral hazard and also to ensure that people don't speculate on their own lives by taking out far more insurance than they are worth. Once a life insurance application is reviewed, it is then assessed in terms of the risk posed by the applicant. The proposed insured is classified into one of the four risk groups, such as standard risk. This is the normal rating. Substandard risk can be accepted but at a higher premium rate. Declined risk. This is a risk that is too high for the insurer to accept. Preferred risk. One that is granted a premium lower than the standard rate. The result of life insurance underwriting is that an application is declined, deferred or accepted. With a deferral, the underwriter temporarily refuses to accept the policy until a particular condition is addressed. Life insurance underwriting is about safeguarding the insurer against anti-selection. It also allows the insurer to select suitable risk in order to prevent guaranteed underwriting losses. Underwriting also serves to ensure that the insurer charges a premium that is related to the level of risk presented. There are many different possible approaches to determination of asset or liability values and required solvency margins in life insurance. First is general principles and issues. The financial strength of a life insurance entity should be assessed by reference to the extent to which the values disclosed for its assets and liabilities contain prudential margins relative to fair or open market value. Financial performance is a separate measure and will also be of importance to these interest groups. Though greater emphasis may well be placed on this by shareholders, analysts and security regulators. The issues relative to financial reporting in life insurance generally revolve around consistency issues, reporting issues and disclosure issues. Next is historical perspective. Historically, insurance accounting has been driven by the needs of the regulators, with the same statutory accounts being presented to other audiences. Consequences were often that there was no way of assessing hidden reserves in both assets and liabilities which contributed to the financial strength of life companies. Next is international position. A broad assessment of current accounting or regulatory reporting practices in four major developed insurance markets USA, UK, Canada, Australia reveal that only two, Canada and Australia, use the same asset or liability valuation basis for both shareholder and statutory accounts and all have sought to achieve consistency between asset and liability valuation methods in shareholder accounts, though US GAAP has some deficiencies in this area. Next is valuation of assets. The basic alternatives are to use historic or market values or some basis of valuation which lies between these two extremes by gradually marking assets to market value according to some smoothing formula which is designed to reduce the impact of short-term fluctuations in market values. Next is valuation of liabilities. The principles of consistency and the direction being taken by international accounting standards indicate that liabilities should also be stated at fair value. This is generally a harder concept to implement than in respect of the assets because there are generally no active markets that deal in insurance liabilities. 
it implies that liabilities will be determined on a prospective gross premium basis as the discounted value of future expected cash flows. The financial strength of the life insurance entity should be measured by comparing its solvency margin, the excess of assets over liabilities, with some measure of risk capital required to assume the risk inherent in the business. The amount of required capital should be representative of the level of risk inherent in the business. Such risk generally being of a pricing or experience and asset default nature. The premium rate for a life insurance policy is based on two underlying concepts, mortality and interest. A third variable is the expense factor which is the amount the company adds to the cost of the policy to cover operating cost of selling insurance, investing the premiums and paying claims. Mortality tables are used to give the company a basic estimate of how much money it will need to pay for death claims each year. By using a mortality table, a life insurer can determine the average life expectancy for each age group. The second factor used in calculating the premium is interest earnings. Companies invest your premiums in bonds, stocks, mortgages, real estate, etc. and assume they will earn a certain rate of interest on these invested funds. The third consideration is the expense of operating the company. The company estimates such expenses as salaries, agents' compensation, rent, legal fees, postage, etc. The amount charged to cover each policy's share of expenses of operation is called the expense loading. Life insurance is the best approach for tax planning or saving. The Indian government has declared tax incentives for life insurance products. Tax incentives can be availed under Section 88 of the Income Tax Act 1961. Any individual can claim a rebate of 20% on the annual premium paid towards life insurance for his or her life and for his or her children or adult children. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. The principle of risk sharing only works when the law of large numbers is operational. Right or wrong? Right. Whole life policies have no fixed end date for the policy. Only the premium exists and is paid to the named beneficiary. Right or wrong? Right. Term insurance is not for a specific period and has the lowest possible death benefits among all insurance plans. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. A contract of life assurance is that in which one party agrees to pay a given sum on the happening of a particular event contingent upon the duration of human life in consideration of the immediate payment of a smaller sum or certain equivalent periodical payments by another. Life insurance business is the business of effecting contract upon human life. The growth and evolution of life insurance into the present day scientific mechanism can be attributed to the rapid growth of actuarial sciences. It is a support for the successful running of a family. Life insurance started in India as early as year 1818. A good financial planning will protect an individual from unforeseen financial crisis. It will provide required financial support and confidence. Term insurance provides protection for a specified period of time. Renewable term plans give you the right to renew for another period when a term ends, regardless of the state of your health. Convertible term policies often permit you to exchange the policy for a permanent plan. Senior life insurance sometimes referred to as graded death benefit plans and provides eligible older applicants with minimal whole life coverage without a medical examination. Life insurance underwriting is about risk assessment just as life insurance is about risk management. 
The premise for underwriting does not arise from the mere existence of risk, but from the reality that all risks are not equivalent. Underwriting also serves to ensure that the insurer charges a premium that is related to the level of risk presented. The premium rate for a life insurance policy is based on two underlying concepts, mortality and interest. 